great Christmas and it's almost time to say Happy New Year. And that's where we're going to be heading today. We're going to be looking to the future and the year ahead. And uh, granted, maybe there's not a lot of hope, maybe some fear and anxiety around what's ahead. But we're going to look at God's word, Isaiah 43, where we can find seven reasons uh, to not fear the future. Seven reasons not to be afraid of what the new year holds uh, from God's word. So we're going to read God's word, Isaiah 43, 1 to 13. Then we've got a song. Then we're going to look at a bit more detail at those verses and then finish with a song. So just a short service today. Uh, many people, hopefully, are meeting on, on Zoom today and having a time of sharing. But this is available for those who who, who don't do that or, or just want to receive a message. And I hope that you'll be blessed. Let me pray and then we're going to read scripture, sing and think from there. Father God, we do thank you for your word. We pray that it will bring comfort, help, hope today as we look at it. Speak to us all we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah 43 But now, this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear. For I have redeemed you, I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Lead out those who have eyes but are blind have ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Which of their gods foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things? Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right so that others may hear and say it's true. You are my witnesses declares the Lord and my servant whom I've chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me no god was formed nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Saviour. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed, I, and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am He. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? In a time of uncertainty, let's sing or listen to this song about the certainty of God and his unchanging character and his unchanging love.
Well, Isaiah 43 is a fantastic scripture to look at at the end of this year, but as a scripture to go into the new year. And um, as we enter this new year, uh, maybe you're feeling a bit afraid, maybe a bit fearful. It's not something we like to admit fear often, is it? But to be honest, fear is an emotion that humans have experienced uh, throughout our existence. But fears are different for different people. And I'm not just talking about spiders and stuff like that. But for different people, there are things that make them anxious, fearful. Uh, and at the moment, there must be an element of fear about the future. At this time, maybe more than ever, uh, you or many people are experiencing that sense of fear. We live in a time when there's lots of things that could cause us to fear anyway. Whether that's crime or terrorism. Um, health issues that maybe we're facing and maybe the, the struggle that the NHS is facing causes us to have fear too. Bringing up kids in this culture uh, at this present time maybe causes us to have fear. We can fear that the past will come back to bite us. We can fear what's going on in the present. We can fear what the future holds. We can fear all kinds of things. And this COVID is really probably upping the ante in terms of the levels of anxiety and fear people are feeling over health, over family and friends, over future prospects, work, the kids' education, all kinds of things. But God says here in Isaiah 43, do not fear. I've said this before, but someone did a study and found that this is the most frequent command of God in the whole Bible. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Fear not. And in many ways, this theme appears all throughout the Bible from the beginning to the end. And it's to do with, in the Bible anyway, our relationship with God. We looked at the Proverbs recently. We just finished a series and we talked quite a lot about the fear of the Lord. And in a sense, when you fear the Lord, there is nothing else to fear. There's nothing else that comes up to the level of power that God possesses. And if God is with you and for you, who can be against you? If God is with you, what is there to fear? However, fear is a natural reaction to things that we're uncertain of. And the future is uncertain. And we, fear is also a reaction to things that we suspect um, or we know are going to be harmful. And again, you know, maybe we have suspicions about the way ahead. that It's going to be difficult and hard. So it's natural to have fears about the future whether they're fears related to COVID or not, the truth is, at this time, I think these words are very pertinent. Fear not. But God doesn't just say, fear not and get on with it. 
he gives us good reason to fear not for, for not being afraid if we're people who are believing in him and trusting in him and his way of salvation and trusting him uh, as his children then we have seven reasons according to Isaiah 43 there's there's actually probably more in Isaiah 43 itself but throughout the whole Bible there'd be ton more but just today from the few verses we've looked at in Isaiah 43 there are seven reasons not to fear a new year seven reasons not to fear the new year if you're a child of God, these are, these are fantastic reasons for you. So we're going to look at these seven reasons together. The first one is God created you. So it says in verse one, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you. Israel. Now God formed the family of Israel, um, but God created, formed the whole human family, and that includes us. All the way back in Genesis, God created mankind as the pinnacle of his creation, having created the whole world. He then created man mankind, male and female, in his image. And having said creation was good, he then said creation was very good, as those he had created were made in his image. Now, when you create something, it's important to you. When you create something that's important to you, it might not be valuable to other people, the painting that you've done or the brick wall that you've made, but to you, it has value. You create it, it's yours. And when you are in the creative industry, if someone creates something, they, they own it. It's, there's a copyright element to it and, and, and it, it's valued to you. It's, and that's the way it is with God. He created you and therefore you are valuable to him. When I was only seven years old, I did my first clay model. I remember making this clay model of a snail. Uh, and in fact, the whole class made these models of snails. And um, without wanting to brag, everyone was like, oh, Chris's one's the best. It's so good. And I guess someone was a little bit jealous because when we went to break, leaving our snails on the radiator to dry, when we got back, there was a big thumbprint in my snail shell. And it was damaged. And there was no way of restoring it because it had now dried quite a bit. Now, obviously, to this day, I don't know who, and I, I don't mind, but the reality is, even though that snail was damaged different to how I made it, I still loved it. I took it home. I looked after it. It went on the mantelpiece. You know, I made it. I created it. And, you know, we are broken people. We've gone against God, and the world is broken, and it's not what it was. But God hasn't given up on us. He created us. He loves us. And so, again, that's the reason not to fear. God created us, and it tells us here in Isaiah 43, we're precious and honoured in his sight. We're highly valued to God. God still sees us as valuable. He, he created us. And not only that, having created us and not wanting to give up on us, even though we'd gone against him and gone our own way and made a mess of things, he still wants to get us back. And that's the second thing. From this passage that we find another reason not to fear the new year. God, God saved us. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world and the people of the world that he sent his son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And he sent him not to condemn the world, it says in verse 17, but to save the world through Jesus. So this second reason not to fear is that God has saved us. He's done so much for us already. He gave his son that we might be forgiven from our sins and restored to a relationship with God. And his way of doing that, as these verses tell us, is uh, to, to ransom us. Uh, to ransom us. He says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you or re redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. So that could be redeemed or ransomed. For I am the, Holy, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. So God is Saviour, and to save involved redemption or, or ransom. Redeem is not a word that we use an awful lot, is it? Uh, but, but we can talk about redeeming a bad situation. is to, to, to make the most of a bad situation, restore it to how it, it was meant to be, or, or make it even better, Re redeeming um, or restoring things to how 
they, they should be. And that's what God done in our situation because of our own sin and going our own way. We're separated from God, but he hasn't given up on us. He, he wants to redeem the situation and he does it himself by literally redeeming us, making right the situation himself by Jesus being this perfect life that then dies this perfect death in our place so that we can be made right with God. So we could be, as the Bible says, saved saved from separation from god saved from our sin saved from being under c control if you like the prisoners if you like to satan and saved to uh, eternal uh, glory with god in the future that's what salvation is and god has done that for us that's how important we are to him so again we do not need to fear you know we don't even have to fear death if you're saved then you're safe you're you're going to heaven you're in you're going to the better place a place where everything will be redeemed and restored. Not only we're redeemed, as in brought back to God and restored to God, the whole of creation, it tells us in the Bible, is going to be redeemed. Uh, there's a very famous story, which has been used a lot, and you probably heard it, but it really does illustrate the point really well. This 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 kid, he, he crafted his own boat out of wood. Uh, he loved it because he, he made it himself. To him, it was precious. But actually, it was a really good boat. And... Um, and he, and he tried it on the water and he put it on the water, but he did it on a river. And very soon that the, the tide took the boat down river and he, and he lost sight of it and he, he lost it and he thought it was gone forever. It got lost. Someone clearly picked it up further down the river and then they took it to a, a second hand shop where they were selling, you know, uh, various bits and bobs. And a few days later, the boy sees the, his boat in the window for sale and he knows it's his boat. It's, it, it was handmade. It was unique. He even put his initials on it and he tried to convince the shopkeeper it was his. It's mine, it's got my names on it. I created it, it's mine, it belongs to me. And there is that principle, which we didn't mention earlier, that the fact that God created us means we belong to him. There's this ownership principle, you know, copyright. It's very important when you create something that it, it does belong to you unless you sell that copyright. So, But the shopkeeper just didn't buy it. He wouldn't accept it. And so he... Um, he, he wouldn't give it to him. So what did the boy do? Well, he got enough money together and he bought his boat back. It was already his because he created it. There's that principle in the create ownership principle that still exists in law. There's loads of laws about it. It's a principle from creation. You create it, you own it, but it was lost. But he paid for it to get it back. And as he got his boat, the story goes that he said, you know, you're twice mine. I made you and I paid for you. I got you back. I bought you back. Which is what redemption is. And well, God has done that. Why? Well, that's the third point. Because God loves us so much. As we saw in John 3.16, God loved the world so much. God loved us so much. The people of the world. And it says here in verse 4, since you are precious and honoured in my sight and because I love you. So God saves us. Why? Because we're precious and honoured in our sight. In his sight, and he loves us. If you put your trust in God and you're saved, not only is, you, is he your creator, he's, he's your saviour. He's brought you twice. Um, he, sorry, you belong to him twice, both as the creator God, but also as the one who's bought you for a price. And you belong to him, so he loves you. You're always part of his family. Uh, he loves you with a perfect love. He's now our loving father. Jesus said that those who put their trust in him can call God Abba, Father. And that's where we're at. And Romans tells us that if we're in Christ and we've come into this relationship with God as Father, then nothing can separate us from the love of God. And in Romans there, verse, chapter 8, it tells us that, you know, it goes through a whole list of things that cannot separate us from God's love. Nothing, not even death, because in fact, death is a, the gateway to, to being right into uh, the presence and the arms of God, our Father. So nothing can harm us because God loves you. Now, we know that we're capable of causing problems to ourselves. In some ways, the biggest fear that you might have or I might have is pressing what might be called a self-destruct button and making a mess of our lives and maybe hurting other people at the same time. And well, even that, God loves you despite what you may have done and how you may feel. You know, someone has said that God, God can't love us anymore. And it, that, and he can't love us any less. So whatever we do or don't do doesn't make any difference. God still loves us. And uh, and because he loves us again, he, 
he's going to look after us. That's the fourth point. God's got you. God's got you. That comes from verse 2, where it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. This is just incredible. Um, you know, problems and trouble, difficulties and suffering, th th they are reasons to fear naturally, aren't they? We're not immune from uh, the things of this world that go wrong. Notice from the passage, it says when you go through the fire, when you experience these turbulent waves um, and you're in the deep waters. So the Christian is definitely not immune from trouble or difficulties. In fact, we're told in the New Testament, particularly the book we're going to be looking at soon, Peter, to expect trouble, to expect suffering. Jesus said, in this life you will have trouble. Uh, but then he says, but do not fear, um, because he has overcome the world. He will supply what we need so that even though we go through the fire, it says we will not be burnt. Even though we go through deep waters and, and maybe they they look like and they, they seem sort of threatening to drown us, we will not drown. Um, so all these things that are real and difficult issues that we face, which may come like a tsunami, like a flood, or like a blazing fire into our lives, sometimes unexpected, sometimes we can see them coming and we can't avoid them. <clears throat> Even though we go through them, which we will, and they will cause an element of fear and panic and pain and all those sort of things, but if we're trusting in God, it says we do not need to be hurt. We do not need to be burnt. We do not need to go under because God is with us. I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? You know, it, you go for a fire, but we'll not get burnt. Is saying to us, you're not going to actually get, it's, it's real, the fire's real. But because of God's supernatural presence and help, we do not need to be permanently uh, damaged or disabled by what we experience, tough as it may be. Um, you know, we don't even have that scar. We don't even have, a, have to have a scar. That's how amazing it is the difficulties and the dangers and the tough stuff that we face and go through and some of it might be um of our own doing some of it might be uh, what's done to us some of it might just be being part of this world some of it might be because we're christians are saying attacking us all kinds of things um that we can face we go through the light fires the light floods but we don't have to be hurt or harmed we can come through it all because god's got us God's got us. He is, we're told in the Old Testament especially, but also sometimes in the New, and, uh, and Jesus is referred to as this as well, as the rock, the rock. Um, another preacher tells a story of his own experience of when he um, was in deep water, in the sea, and got into trouble, and the tide turned, and he couldn't get back. And uh, he started panicking, he started getting weaker and weaker, and the waves got bigger and bigger, and he really thought that that was it. And as he kind of treaded water and just tried to stay uh, above water because he, he'd given up on swimming back because he just couldn't beat the tide, he suddenly found his feet on solid rock. And he was able to stand there and get his, get his strength back a little bit, just keeping his head above water and breathing. And gradually he started to, to walk towards shore following this, this solid ground. And he was saved. And that's God. We have God uh, to give us... Uh, that solid ground that we need. He, he's got us. He's holding us. He gives us that supernatural strength and solutions uh, to natural suffering and sorrow. So, and this applies to what's to come. This applies to the future. So maybe you do have fear about the future and this new year. But again, this is one of those reasons not to fear this new year. God's got you. And I can testify from personal experience over many years, decades, that God has provided and he's guided and he's uh he's he's prom he's promised never to leave us or forsake us and he's he fulfills that promise he does uh it doesn't mean you won't go through tough stuff but you've got god with you and that's the sixth point verse five says do not be afraid for i am with you just saying it clearly there you know this christmas we We've been reminded already in our services that he is Emmanuel, God with us. And we've contrasted that with what COVID has caused, that we can't even spend time with uh, quite close family, friends at this at this time. Uh, COVID has separated us from that, but we're not separated from God ever. We're, he has promised to be with us no matter what, 24-7, um, 
with us to the end of the age and he's not going to leave us or forsake us. He says, I am with you. What a fantastic uh, reason, uh, foundation for, for not fearing, not fearing the future. Even when we ignore him, even though he's promised to be with us, it might seem like he's distant because we've kind of got our own way. But it says that he will pursue us. He will continue with us. He will strive with us. He will not give up on us. Psalm 139, some of my favorite verses as well. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. So, so verse 10 confirms what we said earlier. God's got you, and not only does he hold you fast, he also will guide you and protect you and lead you in his direction. That indicates to us that God has a plan for our lives and he knows best. Um, another reason not to fear. God has a plan for you. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Here we see in uh, Isaiah 43, throughout the whole passage really, so I haven't uh, quoted from that, but uh, throughout the whole passage really we see how God's got plan, a plan for his people. And he, and he wants them to follow that plan. And we've been looking at that in Proverbs as well. Uh, again, a series that we've done this year that's reminded us again and again, we, if we trust in God, he'll show us. Uh, his plan for our lives, he'll lead us in the, the paths that he has for us. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6 particularly is what we've looked at, where it invites us to, to seek and to know his will, trusting in him, not depending on our own wisdom or ideas, but just looking to him for guidance. And it says he'll make our paths straight. In, in everything that we do, we can acknowledge him, we can involve him. And he will guide us, and lead us. So even if the future is uncertain and potentially difficult and to be naturally to be feared, supernaturally, we can go, God, you've got this. You've got me. My life is in your hands. Please guide me, provide, protect me. Show me the way to go. And he's promised he'll do that. And so as we enter a new year, uh, we, we do so knowing he has a plan. And he, he also he holds the future. And that's the last point, really. Uh, God is sovereign or, or God is in control. He knows what's ahead. And we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. You heard that before? We do not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. And it's, it's, he's God. He's sovereign. So you've got here in this passage, verses 3 and 13. 3 says, for I am the Lord your God. And verse 13 says, end of verse 12 into 13, I am God. yes. And from ancient days, I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? God's saying, you know, if I plan it, it happens. I know what's going to happen as well. I'm sovereign. I am God. I'm in control. He's all powerful. He is sovereign. He is overall. He is in control. Nothing takes him by surprise. Even though we don't know what's coming, he does. And where do you want to put your life? Well, I want to put my life in his hands because he holds the future. No one can undo what he plans. God is in control. Nothing can happen really outside of his control. Yes, he permits things, he's, he has his divine will, and part of that is his divine permission, allowing people to make choices that they make. Um, we also have his divine edict, where he what he's decided happens, and that's that. God is sovereign over all. And we see that in the in the cross that when we may look at the present and think all is difficult or lost or beyond hope or whatever, um, God has another perspective. God has another perspective. Can you see what that is? What if I come back a bit? What does it say? Sometimes when we're looking at things up close, the immediate, it can seem confusing and uncertain and we're not sure what's going on. Uh, but God sees things from a different perspective. He sees things from their whole, from a distance. And, uh, and maybe in the future we'll be able to look back and see clearly what was going on when we were going through those difficult times and even 
look back uh, as, a, as, a, as a human race on COVID and see maybe how God was at work in that time. But God knows what's going on. Friday, when Jesus died on the cross, all hope seemed to be lost as far as those disciples and his friends were concerned. They didn't know what Sunday was going to hold, but God did. Even in the grave, God was at work. And then on that Sunday, Jesus rose, defeating sin, Satan, death, securing our salvation for all eternity. Um, and uh, and God, God had that all covered. It was all, all the plan. But on the Friday, it looked desperate. But Sunday was coming. And that's the perspective that maybe we need to have too. Uh, on our lives when we're going through the difficult times and the tough stuff uh, to realise and recognise that, that God is in control, God has a plan it's a good, pleasing, perfect plan it's not to harm us but to, to look out for us, look after us he's got us, he loves us God made you he saved you as a result he loves you he's got you he, uh, he has a plan for your life and he is sovereign overall so let's just trust in him. Let's depend on him. Uh, let's recognise that there is power, provision, peace in God's presence. So let's seek him and continue to find him to be a God who deals with our fears and who holds the future so we don't have to worry about that. Amen. Happy New Year. There is strength within the sorrow. There is beauty in our tears. in our morning with a love that cast out fear you are working in our waiting you're sanctifying us when beyond our understanding Teaching us to trust Oh, your plans are still to prosper You have not forgotten us You're with us in the fire and the flood You're faithful forever Perfect in love You are sovereign over us Understand your ways, reigning high above the heavens, reaching down in endless grace. You're the lifter of the lowly, compassionate and kind. Surround and you uphold me, and your promises are my.